That's not three days and three nights. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody said, don't matter. Oh, yes, it does. Unless you're going to discard what Jesus said. Amen. Right. That's a Catholic thing. Catholic thing. They came up with Good Friday. Yeah. Look back in your church history, you'll find out that the Catholics came up with Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And got it wrong one more time. And got it wrong one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no way that, that man don't add up. Hallelujah. Go with me this morning, if you will, to the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. Hallelujah. What a blessed week this past week has been. My, my, my. I went over to pick up the newsletters and uh, had an opportunity to go by the hospital and visit with Sister Martine and pray with her and visit with Brad and pray with him. Hallelujah. And believe in the Lord to work mildly on both of them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Brother Brad's doing better, and I'm believing Sister Martine's going to as well. Amen. Hallelujah. But heard from a few listeners this week and got some good feedback, and always glad to hear from our listeners, Amen, and people viewing the, the uh, sermons and uh, listening to our radio station. And got a call this morning about 6 15 from a listener in West Virginia that uh, listens to our all music program but they wanted the newsletter well see what I told you last week about the uh, music program opens the door it allows you to get your foot in the door in other ways amen so they uh, they talked about how encouraging the music program was and they really really wanted the trumpet so that's good we'll send that out to them Luke the second chapter, I mean the 22nd chapter, I'm sorry. The 31st verse, Luke 22 and 31. The Bible says, and this is Jesus talking to Peter. He turns to Simon Peter and He says, Simon, Simon, behold, and oh, that would be a good place to stop and think, uh-oh. He's getting ready to tell See, the disciples will always want to know Who's going to be first? Who's going to be second? Who's going to sit on your right hand? Who's going to sit on your left hand? Right. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God? Amen. Jesus turns to Simon and He says, Simon, Simon, behold! Yeah. And you know, at that point, He don't know what Jesus is fixing to say. Maybe He thinks, He's finally going to give me the credit I deserve. <laughs> Come on. He turns to him and says, Behold, Satan hath desired to have you. All right. Amen? Come on. To have you. You see, it's not enough for the enemy to pick at you. He wants to control you. He wants to have you. Amen? Right. That means that he wanted to possess him. Amen? That means, if you look at it in the Greek, it means to call or demand for trial. All right. So he was demanding to test Peter yeah. to have him. And Jesus doesn't stop where he says that he may sift Amen? That He may sift you as wheat. Yeah. Now we know the sifting process is one that they did to separate the garbage and the chaff from the real wheat. They would take it, toss it up in the air, and yeah. shake the screen wire looking thing underneath it, and the good stuff would go on through, and uh -huh. then it would catch the bad stuff on top. Amen? Uh -huh. which, is exactly, which is exactly what this trial would do for Peter, but it doesn't sound very pleasant whenever you're talking about it. Amen? The devil wanted to scatter him. He wanted to riddle him. He wanted to shake him. Yeah. But in this shaking, in this riddling, in this scattering, in this sifting, the good would be separated from the bad. Amen? Amen. Just like it's gold when it's put into a furnace to be tried. Amen? Right. And it gets out the dross and the things that are not pure. And it brings forth that which is pure gold. Amen? Right. That's exactly what this trial would do for Peter. That he was right. getting ready to go into. So it wasn't a terrible, it wasn't a pleasant thing to think about right. that he was getting ready to be tried, uh -huh. that Satan desired to have him, that Satan desired to sift him. But see, everything that the enemy means for bad, God means for good. Amen? Right. Any trial you ever go through is not to destroy you, but to make you stronger. Amen? That's right. 
Whenever you're working on a, a, a pressing bench and you're you're pressing uh, uh, weights and you're lifting weights and you're working your muscles, you're not doing that to destroy your muscles, even though it hurts, even though it's a workout, even though there's pain involved. It's to make your muscles stronger than they were when you started pressing. Amen. Peter was going to be stronger when he came through this sifting process than he was before it started. But I'm sure whenever. That ain't the thing you want Jesus to turn to you and say. Come on. Satan wants you. Right. He desires to sift you as wheat. Right. Now listen to this. Oh, but listen. Let me stop here for just a minute. The fact that he said sift you as wheat oh. means something. Amen. Do you remember Jesus yeah. likened believers and unbelievers as wheat and tares? Right. Here, he calls Peter wheat. Amen. Amen. So at least Peter does have the comfort of knowing, hey, at least I am one of them. <laughs> at least I am the part of the wheat field. Amen. I'm not a tear. Yeah. And Jesus doesn't stop her and says, but I have prayed for thee. And I know we've read this before. But listen to me this morning. You might get something fresh out of it. But I have prayed for thee. And Peter might have thought, as you know, we might have. Mm -hmm. We like to pray for each other not to go through things. Right. And maybe that's what, where Peter's mind went. I don't know where his mind went, but maybe he thought, all right, Jesus has prayed that this not happen, but that ain't what Jesus said he prayed for. Come on. He said, I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Uh -huh. Amen? Come and on. when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus didn't pray for him not to go through it. Yeah. Jesus knew that it was needful that Peter go through the valley. See <clears throat> Jesus knew that it was needful that Peter go through the trial. Yes, you see, we got a whole church world that believes that anytime you're in a valley or going through a trial, you don't miss God. Come on. That God's will cannot be for you to go through things. I'm here Come to tell on. you today that it's not God's will that you live on the mountain. Right. Amen. Right. It's not God's will for you to live on the mountain because just like the muscles we were talking about a while ago, you will become weak. Right. If you never have to exercise your faith, your faith becomes weak. Yeah. Faith is like a muscle. The more you have to use it, the stronger it gets. Yeah. The more you let it sit unused, the weaker it gets. Same way with the muscles in your body. If you never have any, if you never have any exercise, if you never have any activity, you begin to grow weaker. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But Jesus tells him, "I pray for you." Yeah. See, it's not so important this morning that Brother David don't go through things. As a matter of fact, that's needful. <laughs> That'll separate you from the crowd this morning, Amy. Amen. It's needful for you to go through things. All right. But the most important thing about you going through it is that your faith does not fail right. while you're going through it. Amen. Amen. We all know what Peter went through. We all know that he denied the Lord. Right. We all know that what he did, and we've talked about it. Mm. Thank the Lord. My, my, yeah. my. Thank the Lord that when He came out, He came out stronger in the Lord than He was before it started. Amen. Right. If you look at Peter beforehand, I won't deny you. I won't deny you. I'll go with you all the way to death. And then you find him denying that he even knew the man because he was scared they might put him to death. And then you go on down the road some. You find him over in the book of Acts after the day of Pentecost standing up before all of Jerusalem. This same man that he denied it to the maiden had denied it to the people there around the fire there as Jesus was getting tried that he didn't know it. We find him over there on the day of Pentecost staggering out of the upper room saying this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Amen. In the last day saith God I will pour out my spirit. And he preaches and he tells them about him crucifying Jesus and how that it was impossible for death to hold him and thousands of souls were added to the church that day Peter was a changed man yes, sir. Peter was not the same Jesus said you're going to go through this but when you come out of it stronger than you were you're going to be able to strengthen your brothers All right. See, you can't strengthen other people if you've never been through something yourself Amen. that's what Peter learned yes, Hallelujah. Sir. not only that my goodness, and certainly he wasn't perfect and he would, uh, he would have some differences in, and even had to be rebuked on the uh, circumcision and the and the uh, the the uh, non-circumcised, you know, because he was got caught up in that law thing that you have to be circumcised or, or you, you're not clean, you know. The Jews are are the ones, and the Greeks ain't. And Jesus yeah. would have to let down a net with some unclean animals and tell him to rise and eat. And Peter would say, no, not so. I've never ate an unclean thing. I don't eat unclean stuff. And, and the Lord would say, that which I have cleansed, call thou not unclean. Amen? 
talking about the, the message that he had to yeah. preach, not just to the Jew, but to the Gentile as well. Right. That you don't have to be exactly the way the law says you have to be. If you do, we're all going to miss it. Amen? Nobody that I know lives the law to the T. Can't. That's why Jesus came. Right. Amen? You can't. So he would preach and not perfect, but my goodness, he would raise the lame man there. Him and John would, would uh, heal him at the gate of uh, the temple as they went in. And they, the Bible records how that they would lay sick people out the side of the road so that Peter's shadow would be cast upon them in hopes that they would be healed. And some of them were. Amen. Yeah. So Peter went on to be a great man of God, but he had to go through things. Amen. In order for you to grow, you have to go through trials. In order for your faith to be stronger, it has to be worked. Come on. It is not God's will that you live on the mountain. I know we like to sing, I'm living up on the mountain and I'm alright. Yeah. I'm living up on the mountain and I'm alright. Amen. Oh. I don't have to worry. I don't have to get up tight because I'm living up on the mountain and I'm alright. Right. Ain't God's will for you to live on the mountain. Oh. There are trials. There are valleys. Right. There are things that you will go through in this life. Amen. That if you will allow them to, God will take those things and use them to make you stronger Amen. This man, at the end, according to history, this is not recorded in the Bible, but according to Bible history, whenever he got ready to be put to death for the cause of Christ, didn't go kicking and screaming, but was more than willing. This man that denied Jesus back there at Pilate's Hall was more than willing to lay down his life for Jesus. Even so much so, Brother David, that according to history, he said, don't crucify me like you did Him. Crucify me upside down. I'm not worthy to be crucified the same way as Jesus was. Right. Oh, you talk about a difference. Mm. Trials will change you. Amen. Valleys will change you. Right. If you go through those and you hold on to your faith, then your faith becomes stronger. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus didn't pray for Peter not to go through this thing. I could pray that for you today. I could come down here and I could pray, Lord, please, don't let Brother Sleese ever go through nothing. And my prayer would be in vain because Sleese going to go through some things. Right. Every one of us. There ain't a one of us. One of you out there in the sound of my voice. There ain't a one of us that don't go through things. Right. That aren't facing things. I, just this past week, I can name a dozen people that I ran into, that I talked to, that I got emails from, or that I went and seen that are going through things. Right. They're facing things. And to pray for them, never have to face another battle, would not be a just and fair prayer. Right. Because it's not God's will that you never go through a trial. It's His will that that trial makes you better and makes you stronger and tries your faith. And your faith becomes greater than it was whenever you went in. Right. I know many times we are told that if we're going through something, and this is the mindset of the church, the biggest part of the popular church, that if you're going through something, we must have missed God's will somewhere along the line. Amen? Somewhere or another, you must not be in God's will. James would say in James the first chapter, you don't have to go there, but I'm going to read it to you, the second and third verse. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now that means adversity, it means trial, it means experience. He says count it all joy when you experience these things. Why? Why? Verse 3 says, Knowing this, Brother David, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Job said, But he knoweth the way I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. All right. See, the Bible likens our trials and our valleys yeah. to the trying of gold. Amen. I remember the story someone said, someone wrote that there was a silversmith that he was putting the silver into the fire yeah. to get all of the impurities out of it. And someone asked him, how do you know when the silver... See, if you leave it in there too long, you'll destroy it. Right. You have to leave it in there just the, amount of, just the right amount of time. Right. He said, they said, how do you know when it's ready? He said, whenever I can see my reflection in it. Mm. Oh, my, my, my. That's what trials... That's what the valley experience will do for right. us. If we will allow it. Right. Amen. Right. It will bring us to the place. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Yeah. Where the impurities and certain things, many times, many times, you come out of the valley yeah. with a lighter load than you went in with. Amen. Amen. All of us carry around baggage. Right. 
Right. Amen. You ain't going to get rid of it living on the mountaintop. That's it. You ain't going to get, your faith doesn't get stronger wow. living on the mountaintop. It's whenever your faith is put to the test, whenever you have to work it like a muscle, right. whenever you go through the valley. Today's sermon is called Finding a Song yeah. in Your Valley. Amen. Finding a Song in Your Valley. Now we all know the story of Paul and Silas. We've preached it. We've taught it. We've sung it. We've talked about it. How that at midnight they're in the Philippian jail. Yeah. They were beaten. They were bruised. They'd been thrown in there. But instead of murmuring and, murmuring and complaining, Come on. they begin at midnight, the Bible says, to sing praises to God. Right. You see, here in the midnight hour, Paul and Silas found the song. Yeah. Amen. Come on. They begin to, instead of singing gloom, despair, and agony, that we don't sing in the valley. Yeah. Well, sometimes we do. Amen? Come on. Gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark, depression, excessive misery, or maybe you're cheating heart or whatever. Yeah. But the song they begin to sing was praises to God. Amen. And when they begin to do that, the Bible says that the prison walls begin to shake. Yes, sir. Amen? That's what happens whenever you find your song in the valley. Amen. Chains begin to fall. Right. Prison doors begin to open. Right. Oh, my, 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 my. Things begin to happen when you find your song in your valley. Amen? Right. Listen to this. Zechariah 13 and 9 says, and he's talking about God's people, I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. Psalm 66 and 8 says, Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of the praise to be heard, which, be, which holdeth our soul in life and suffereth not our feet to be moved. Wow. Then he says, For thou, O God, hast proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. I'm trying to tell you this morning, it ain't, I, first, we got to get out of the mindset that, oh no, I must have missed God because some things are going wrong. You just may be in the place where your faith is being tested, where your faith is being tried, where some of the impurities that are in your life is being burned away by the trial and the affliction that you're walking through to the place where when you get through the valley, to the valley, you realize He still holds my hand. He's not waiting on the mountaintop for me to get back up there. He's in the valley with me. Amen? The shepherd didn't send the, send the sheep down into the valley and say, I'll wait up here on the mountain until you get back. He went with, not only did he go with them, he led them through the valley. Amen? That's what David talks about. It's hard to talk about the valley without talking about Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Amen? He leads me beside us still waters. He restores my soul. He makes me to lay down in green pastures. And all of this is done in the valley. Amen? Finding your song in the valley. Amen. I'm persuaded that Peter found a song in his valley. Come on. How do I know this? His faith didn't fail. Right. Amen. I'm sure he was discouraged at times. It wasn't easy. It's not easy on your flesh. I'm not talking about going around with a big S on your chest. <laughs> always being superhero or something. I'm talking about your faith being steadfast. We've been talking about that the last few weeks. Unmovable. Immovable. I'm talking about your faith holding to Jesus. Amen. I'll be clinging to a saving hand. Amen. I might be facing it today. I may be walking. I may not be on the mountain like I was the last time you saw me. But I'll still be holding to His nail-scarred hand. Amen. My faith in Jesus will be intact. People say, everything that I've known has been shaken. Well, sometimes everything we know needs to be shaken except for the fact that we know Jesus. Amen. We go through this sifting process, this trying process. And how you come out of it may depend on whether you found your song in your valley or not. Amen. I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. Peter would say in 1 Peter 1 and 7 that the trial of your faith being made more precious than of gold that is perishable. What's more precious than gold? Your faith. Amen. Amen. You can have all the money in the world. If you don't have faith, you're going to split hell wide open. Amen? That's right, brother. Money does you... I, I posted this week on Facebook, godly prosperity has nothing to do with money. That's it. Nothing. The, the, the church world don't think that. Just turn on there and watch Mike Murdoch or some of the other people. Amen? Yeah. 
Godly prosperity has... Now, I'm not saying God don't want you to have some money. Uh -huh. But I'm telling you, you don't have to have money to be prosperous in God. That's right. Amen? You know, some of the, some of the, some of the people that's got the most money ain't prosperous in God. Amen? Right. They ain't really rich. Amen. Oh, they got some thing, temporal things in this world True. that's going to all pass away. Right. How rich does that make you today? Let me ask you something today. If you find the beggar in the gutter trying to find his lunch out of a trash can and he has Jesus and when he dies he's going to walk on streets of gold and have a heavenly mansion and be with the Lamb of God forever. Right. And then you find the man on the hill on the mountainside in his mansion and he's got so much money he don't know what to do with. Probably likes his cigars with a hundred dollar bill. Yet if he dies that night he's going to split hell wide open and be tortured throughout eternity. Which one of them men are really rich? I know we like to look at it in temporal things. Oh, look at his house. Yeah. Look at his car. None of that matters. None of it matters. That's right. Look at his nice suit. Doesn't matter. Look at his nice home. Doesn't matter. Look at his stock portfolio. So y'all didn't know I knew some of those words. Amen. Doesn't matter. Look at his bank account. I got news for you. When you get to the pearly gate, Peter ain't going to say, let me see your bank account. Right. Let me see how much money you had. Amen. Come on. Because it ain't going to matter. Yeah. Amen. It ain't going to matter. That's the truth. You ain't going to be able to take it with you. And even Amen. if you could, it wouldn't matter. Amen. They walk on gold up there. Amen. Amen. It's like the man that begged and begged to take some of his gold with him. And finally, the Lord let him. Yeah. When he got to the gate, Peter said, You can't bring nothing in here. Got him a sack. Got him a bag here. Yeah. And he says, Oh, I haven't got permission. He said, Okay, let me look and see. He looks in there and he says, Out of all the things in the world you could bring, why in the world would you bring asphalt? Because it's all he used for. Amen. I think that's one of the reasons he said that the streets are paved with gold. Yeah. You walk on it. Because man has put it on such a high level. All my happiness depends upon the gold I have. My happiness depends upon the silver I have. Your happiness, real happiness, depends on Jesus. That's right. Because once you hit the grave, you ain't taking none of it with you. Amen. 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 You're not taking another. I'd rather be in a deep, dark grave and know that my poor soul was saved than to live in this world in a house of gold and deny my God and lose my soul. Right. You ain't rich. Amen. Hugh Hefner, he ain't rich. Amen. The guy with the crazy hair that ran for president for a little while, I can't think of his name half the time. But he ain't rich, not unless he has Jesus. All right. Amen. Have to have Jesus. Come on. You ain't rich. Oh my goodness, I feel good this morning. I remember a story. I've told you these before. I remember a story about a rich man that had all these servants. And one of his name was Mose. And Mose was a godly man. He didn't have much of nothing. Lived in a little sharecropper shack there on the plantation. Yeah. But he had a dream that the richest man in all the valley was going to die. So he goes up the big plant, goes up to the big house there on the plantation and he says he wants to see the master. He wants to see the guy in charge. And he says, I had a dream that the richest man in all the valley is going to die. And he just laughed in his face, you know, because he's trying to warn him. Yeah. He just laughed in his face and sent him on his way and said, oh, Moses, he's crazy. Hmm. But to be on the safe side, he calls the doctor and has a physical and ain't nothing wrong with him that they can find. And they set up all night playing poker because he this dream that the rich man in all the valley is going to die tonight. So they sit up all night watching for death just to make sure Moses is crazy, but just in case he ain't, you know. Yeah. So they sit up all night long drinking and playing poker and all of this, <clears throat> thinking, you know, everything's all right. Daylight comes, the rich man there on the hill is still alive. And he said, well, I guess his dream about the rich man and all the richest man in all the valley nine really was just a bunch of nothing. Mm -hmm. They get a knock at the door and it's one of the servants. They said, uh, Master, we wanted to tell you that Oh, Mose died last night. Mm. See, Mose was the richest man in all the valley. Mm, right. Living in a sharecropper shack, mm. working for the big man on the hill. But the big man on the hill ain't such a big man when it comes to death if he don't have Jesus. Amen. Amen. What happened to the rich man and Lazarus? Lazarus the beggar, carried away by the angels right. into Abraham's bosom. And Abraham... Looking over into the place of hell, sees who? Not Lazarus, but the rich man All right. crying in torment because he didn't his, his gold didn't matter. Mm. Oh how I got off on all that. But money doesn't matter today. Amen. Amen. We're talking about finding your song in your valley. Amen. Right. And your faith not failing when you're going through 
a trial. Amen. How many times have you found yourself saying, Oh, God, please, send a trial so my faith will get stronger. That ain't what we usually pray. Mm -hmm. But sooner or later, trials are going to come. That's right. Amen. And the important thing is not that you don't face things. Matter of fact, that's needful. You need to face things. Right. You need to have exercise for your faith. Amen. Right. We see it in Peter's life. We see it how Paul and Silas found their song at midnight. And I'd, I'd read all that to you, but I don't have time this morning. But the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, the Bible says, there was a great earthquake and the foundation of the prison was shaken. And all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. And the jailer hearing all this thinks, oh no, they've escaped. I'm going to kill myself because that was a, an offense worthy of death if you let a prisoner escape. Amen? Amen. But Paul cries from inside the prison with a loud voice and says, do thyself no harm. We're all here. Right. Not just me and Silas. He didn't say me and Silas are still here. All these other jokers, when their chains fell off and the doors opened, they took off running. No. Because they heard Paul and Silas singing praises to God. I can't imagine. Here you got old Jethro sitting over there a couple of cells down. Probably in there because he stole somebody's chickens or stole their ham or something. Whatever he's in, maybe he's in there for murder and he's getting ready to face you know, the trial. And it's, he's here all around him. He hears people complaining, murmuring. I ain't supposed to be here. Hey, here's the false thing they brought against me. They've accused me of something I didn't do. I'm not supposed to be here. Maybe here's some people cussing. Amen? Right. Out of all of this noise, Brother David, he begins to hear something that don't sound right for prison. Amen. He begins to hear something that doesn't. Oh, hallelujah. It do us some good to let the adversary hear something that don't sound right coming out of the valley. Amen. Right. He's used to hearing us complain. He's used to hearing us murmur and growl about the situation. I wonder what he'd do if he heard a noise coming out of our valley. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. <laughs> That's what the prisoners heard. They heard, they heard Paul and Silas. Them boys is praying. Not only are they praying, it wasn't just that they were praying, oh God, get me out of here. Some of them guys probably didn't pray dead. Yeah. Yeah. But it says they begin to sing praises. See, there's a difference between saying, God, get me out of this valley and saying, thank you, Jesus. I know all things work together for my good. I know you've got me here for a reason. There's a difference between crying out for deliverance and finding your song in your valley. Amen. They found us. It's easy to find a prayer in prison. Amen. You God, deliver me. God, get me out of here. But when you begin to say, Oh, how I love Jesus. The prisoners heard them and that caused them to stick around. We might as well stay and see what's going on. Because if we leave, they're going to catch us anyway. We need to find out what the difference is between Paul and Silas and us. Because we did some praying. We did some complaining. They did some praying and they found the song at midnight and began to sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. How about that? How about finding your song in the midnight hour? Yeah. How about finding a song in your valley? Right. Amen. Come on. Because see, that's whenever the enemy expects your faith to fail. Yeah. Amen. And he he don't expect you to your faith to fail when you're on the mountaintop. Right. Because you got the victory. Come on. Everything's going good. You just got to raise it work. Right. Amen. The wife's treating you good. The husband's treating you good. Whichever one you are. Yeah. Husband or wife. One of you's walking on the mountain. Amen. You're all excited. Things are going good. Yeah. But whenever, it, you know, my like poor old brother Mike, he lost his job. Two hours later, your daddy falls and breaks his back in three places. Mm. And all this happens in one day. Yes. Then the adversary says, let's listen at him now. Yeah. 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 That's what he's waiting on. Let's listen to him now. He was singing a victory when he got his raise. He was singing a victory when he wasn't sick. He was singing a victory when he was walking on cloud nine. Let's see how he sings now. <laughs> That's what he's waiting on for Paul and Silas. There's old loud mouth Paul going around proclaiming about Jesus and all that stuff. Let's see what he does now. Paul looks over Silas and Silas looks over Paul and says, hey, that's saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Great is the Lord. I don't know what they sung. Yeah. 
greatly to be praised, but they certainly had knowledge of the Psalms. It's probably one of David's songs yeah. that he wrote out there on the hillside while he's watching them sheep. Amen. Yeah. Well, David, the songs David wrote while he's out there in the valley right. watching them sheep. Amen. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Maybe they sung the 23rd Psalm. Right. My goodness. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He restoreth my soul. Maybe they sung, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Maybe that's what they sing. Oh, see, they sing a little different than we do. Amen. You know, we sing like, you know, he ain't never done me nothing. But if you ever hear some of them Hebrew boys sing, it ain't exactly the same kind of melody that we've got. Amen? Right. They'll play it on that harp and they'll sing and it, Maybe it don't sound like music to some people, but it is. Amen. Right. It is to God. It is. To, oh, it is to God. That's exactly right. Yeah. So they begin to sing. They found their song uh -huh. in prison. The difference in the way that we come out of the valley and the benefit that we get from it may depend upon whether we find our song while we're in the valley. See it. Amen. Amen. Uh, listen to this. I'm fixing to close here in a minute. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> finding a song in your valley I know I keep repeating that but it's on purpose you will never find it until you first realize that just because you're in the valley doesn't mean you're out of God's will amen you will never find it until you realize that it's not because of some reason that God is punishing you or that you're not getting God's best because of your lack of faith or your lack of positive confession. Amen? Amen. You will never find it. You will never realize it. You will never find your song in the valley until you realize that this did not come to stay, but it came to pass. Amen? If you do not realize that this is the trying of your faith and not the destruction of it, you will never find your song in the valley until you realize these things. Until you realize that He is not only God on the mountain, but He is God in your valley as well. Oh, you'll never find your song. But when you realize that the same God that you sang praises to when you was walking on cloud nine is the same God when you're walking through the valley, then you can find your song in your valley. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Until you realize that no matter what's going on in your life, yeah. the shepherd is with you, he's watching, and he's working it out for your good. And when you realize those things, it ain't so hard to sit in jail at midnight and begin to sing, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Amen. When he had tried me, I will come forth as gold. He's restored my soul. He's going to use me right here where I'm at. I'm going to find my song in my valley and I'm going to sing praises to God. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you realize these things, it's important. Yeah. Listen to me. You'll never find your song in the valley until you realize that just because you're in the valley doesn't mean you're not in God's will. Amen. Amen. Right. We got this all messed up. We got people who saying God only wants the best for you. He never wants you to face anything. He never wants you to go through a trial. That's hogwash. Right. Amen. Right. He wants to use the trials that you will go through to strengthen your faith. Right. So that you in turn can strengthen others. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The song we opened up with today, this valley is for me. You see, something else you have to realize in order to find the song in your valley, you have to realize that it is your valley. Right. It didn't happen by chance. Amen. You hear what I said? Yes, sir. God is ahead over all things. That's right. Amen. It's time we claimed our valley. Yes, sir. Yes. Tell the enemy, this is my valley. You shut up. Yeah. I'm going to get what God wants me to have out of this valley. Oh, hallelujah. Israel's biggest victories was won in valleys. That's right. Amen. All the enemy, remember David and Goliath, they were in the valley right. when that battle took place. 
The enemy likes to step up and beat his chest and say, what are you going to do? Right. But little David always had a song. Amen? Amen. Takes a sling and a stone right. and brings him down. It's your valley. And in the beginning, God. Amen? And that there's nothing that He cannot see you through. Did you hear that this morning? Amen. It's your valley. Right. This valley is for me. The waters have been made so sweet. A place of rest for my weary feet. This valley is for me. Amen. A far cry from the mountain scene. All the grass here has been made right. so green. My shepherd chose this route and I can say without a doubt this valley is for me. Ball. Amen. When you realize, when you realize that, <laughs> When you realize that singing is the last thing that the enemy expects you to do, right. he don't expect that. Amen. We play something on the radio station every December. It's called the Great Church Robbery, and it's a little comical story, and it's based, at least, it's parody to the Grinch. The man that lives next door to this church, and their ringing bells gets on his nerves, and their singing every Sunday gets on his nerves, so he decides he's going to teach them. He goes into the church when nobody's there. He backs his old pickup up there and he loads up their song books and their Bibles and even the rugs off the floor. While he's doing that, a little girl comes in and says, excuse me, sir, but what are you doing? And quickly thinking, you know, he thinks, I'll act like I'm a blind man. And he tells the little girl, he says, I've come because I want to bless this church. I'm taking out all the old stuff and I'm going to bring back some new things. And of course, the little girl, she believes him. And he turns to go away and the little girl says, before you go, can I pray for you? And before he can say no, the little girl walks over and puts her hand on him and says, Lord, give this man back his sight. He says, that's fine and that's good. He rushes on out there and he gets in his truck and he heads on up the mountain with all of the things, the hymnals, the songbooks, the Bibles, everything that was in the church that he thought caused them joy. He gets out there and he's going to throw it off the cliff. And he says, it's time for them to have their Sunday morning service. Let me see if I can hear them down there murmuring and complaining. He stands up there on the edge of the cliff listening to see if he can hear a song or anything coming from the valley. See if he can hear a noise. He hears a noise, all right. And the more it rises, the more clearer it is. And he can hear them singing, Amazing grace, how sweet. And he's like, wait a minute. I took away their stuff. I took away all their things. Everything that I thought gave them joy. And then a light comes on and he thinks maybe what, what gives them their joy is not a thing, but it's someone. Right. And he realizes that it can't take away the thing, the person that gives them joy. Oh, the valley can't take away the person that gives you joy. He's your shepherd. He's leading you through the valley. And that's your source of joy. So he hears them singing. Glory and just that time he notices the truck is knocked out of gear and it's about to go over the cliff. And he runs over there and he gets in front of it and he's trying his best to keep it from going over. And he prayed. He said, God, I've never prayed before. But please give me the strength to stop what I've started. I accept Jesus right now. And the story says he gained the strength of Samson and even more. And he pushes the truck back up and he jumps in and he goes down the hill and he gives them back all their stuff. And the little girl's prayer was answered because now this man who acted like a blind man, he was actually blind, but now he could see that their song did not depend upon things. If your song depends upon things today, you're in trouble because sooner or later things will run out. Amen. But when you're in the valley and you realize why you're there, who's there with you, what He can do with this situation, it's not that hard to find a song in your valley. My, my, my. One more Scripture. It ended about 26 verses. I ain't going to read it all to you. Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. The Bible talks about Jehoshaphat. <clears throat> King Jehoshaphat, I guess I should say. 2 Chronicles 20. And it goes down through, I think, 26 verses. Y'all can read that later. I'm going to hit over this and tell you what it was going on. 
It says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee, and beyond the sea of the side of Seir, and behold, they be in Hazanatamar, which is in Engadin. Now, Jehoshaphat's sitting here, and they come and tell him, listen, there's a great army coming against you. And he realizes that there's no way that he can defeat, that even with the people that he's got, there's no way, man to man, battle against battle, strategy against strategy, that he can win. So what's he do? He starts crying out to God. He begins to pray and say, Oh God, I know, and this is not word for word, but he prays things like, I know that you're still our deliverer. I know you didn't bring us this far to let us down. I know that you are still God. And he begins to pray. And he begins to seek God. Amen? Right. And listen to this. Drop down. Verse 15. You're probably not there, but anyway. In verse 15 it says, And he said, Hearken ye all of Judah. This is after his prayer. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. The valley, see, is mine, but the battle is God's. Amen. There will be later time here, and I believe it's in the book of Joel, that he calls a place called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley was Jehoshaphat. The battle was God's. Amen. The sooner we realize, yeah, this valley is mine, but the battle is God's, the easier it will be for us to begin saying praises unto Him regardless of where we're at and what's going on. It's not my battle. It's His. And the Lord told them, the Lord told them, you ain't going to have to fight in this battle. That's our problem. We try to fight our way through our valley. We try to fight our way through the trial. We've tried to fight out against everything and it's not even our That's fight. Right, Verse 17 says, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Yeah. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Right. My goodness, have you found your song yet? Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. Listen to this. Drop down to verse uh, 22. No, 21. And when he had consulted with the people, talking about Jehoshaphat, talking with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord yeah. that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. Are you yeah. listening to that? And to say, praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Maybe that's what old Paul and Silas were singing there at midnight in the Philippian jail. Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for His... Oh, that's the thing the enemy don't expect to hear. That ain't what the enemy expected to hear from the people of Jehoshaphat as they came along either. Amen. They knew they were outnumbered. They knew they were outmanned. They knew they were out military. Yet here comes these people with singers in front of them singing, praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord. For, when you get in your valley and you're in your place where God, you, you, you're being put through the trial and the fire and your faith is being put to the test, find you a place and say, great is the Lord. Greatly to be praised. Amen. His mercy endures forever. He is Amen. with me. He is with me. That's right. So He sends the singers out first. You see, they found them a song in the valley. Amen. Oh, I hope you're getting this this morning. Amen. His mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord. Now does that sound familiar? Yeah. We just read over there in the book of Acts that when Paul and Silas began to sing praises to God, something happened. Yeah. They were right there in their valley experience. Mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat sang there's go forth and the Bible says when they began to sing and to praise the Lord. Yeah. It says the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Seir in Mount Seir which were come against Judah and they were smitten. Listen to this. And the children of Ammon, and are you seeing a pattern here? When they begin to sing in this valley, oh my goodness, the enemy, the Bible says turned on one another. Right. When you begin to sing in your valley, yeah. the devils are tripping themselves trying to get away. All right. Amen. Says he sent ambushments. Listen what happens when they get there to where the battle was supposed to be fought. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah 
came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude. And behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Did you hear that? None of them escaped. Amen. Here they are marching into this valley for the battle of their life. Yeah. And they're singing praises to God. Yeah. Realizing that the battle is not theirs. The valley might be. Come on. But the battle is not yours. The battle's not mine. The battle's not mine. Lord, it's yours. It's yours. I'm not going to try to fight it. That's a waste of my time and my energy. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm going to sing praises to you. I'm going to find a song in my valley. And I'm going to sing. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And the enemy was defeated. When Paul and Silas began to sing at midnight, something happened. When you begin to sing Joel 3 and 2 where I was telling you about, he talks about the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now some scholars believe this was the same valley Joel was talking about. Some believe it was just a figurative thing that he was using. Either way, the valley was called the valley of Jehoshaphat. It was his valley, but the battle was God's. Whatever you're going through today, yeah, it's your trial. It's your fight as far as it's your battle you're facing. But the battle is not yours. You don't have to fight it. You just have to find a song and begin to praise God. Begin to exalt Him. Amen. And I'm not telling you that everything will go away and everything will be roses, but I'm telling you, you will come out on the other side stronger than you were when you went in. And your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. Amen. When you find a song in your valley. And finding a song in your valley may be the difference on whether your faith survives the valley All experience right. that you go through. Come on. One more thing. I'm closing. I don't know how long I've been preaching. Probably about 15 minutes. <clears throat> it was Easter morning, 1799. And the people of Fieldrick, Australia, Austria, I'm sorry, were terrified. They believed that this Easter would likely be the very worst day of their lives. Outside the gates of the city stood the army of Napoleon. And he wanted in. The citizens were ready to raise the white flag of surrender. But the bishop of the church there had another idea. In a voice trembling with emotion, he said to the townspeople, This is Easter Day. This is the day of our King's resurrection. We must have a moment of triumph. Let us at least ring the bells as we do every Easter. Fearfully, the people agreed. Soon the sound of the church bells began sounding all through the air and out across the hillsides and through the valley. A sound of celebration, of victory filled the air. Right. And Napoleon's army was astounded when they heard this. They began to ask themselves, what could this mean? Yeah. And it didn't take long for the generals to conclude that the only possible reason that these people could be celebrating or ringing the bells of freedom is because the great Austrian army must have arrived during the night to help defend their town. Yeah. The bells had not stopped ringing when the French army broke ranks and began to flee. Oh, hallelujah. Did you hear that this morning? Oh, hallelujah. I hear the bells ringing. I hear a song singing. Let's get out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you find your song in your valley, hallelujah, the enemy flees because he don't like it. He don't understand it. And victory must be on the way. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, that there put meat on your bones. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get out of here. They must have some help. <laughs> That's probably what the enemy thought when he heard Paul and Silas. Let's get out of here. Amen. He must have, must have some help. Yeah. Help must arrive and we didn't know it. Amen. Oh, hang on, saints. Help is on the way. Amen. Amen. Help has arrived. He's, the Bible says He is our help. And he is our present help yeah. in, time. in time of trouble. Oh. I could run this morning. Hallelujah. Find it in your song yeah. in your valley. Hallelujah. Ring the bells of freedom. Yes, sir. You are not bound today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else have something this morning.